Hey guys, I went to the dollar store over the weekend. I spent $14 getting Princess Cadence from Target, which killed my budget. So a lot of you guys recommended getting My Little Ponies from the dollar store instead. I didn't even know you could do that. So since I trust your guys' valued advice, I took a trip to the dollar store. I found a bunch of cool stuff. One of those airplane sleep masks, a disturbing looking baby doll, and a little glass jar. Pretty nice haul, but sadly I didn't find any MLPs. Since I already made the trip though, I figured I'd make the best of it and do a dollar store makeover. Which I saw Mariah Elizabeth do recently and a few of you guys have wanted me to do one for a while now. So today's the day. My very own evil dollar store makeover. So I'm gonna start off with the blindfold first. I've never actually seen anyone wear one of these before, so I'm not sure how useful this makeover would be to anyone. But that's fine. In TV shows and movies, they make it seem like you'd be wearing one of these a whole lot more than you actually do in real life. Bruh. Surprisingly though, there's a lot of fancy Bruh. sleep masks out there that cost a whole Bruh. lot more money, so I figured I'd just buy this cheap one and customize it and sell it on eBay. I'm sure some sucker will buy it. The mask comes with these earplugs, which are actually pretty convenient since my neighbor is a screaming toddler with space buns. And that's not a joke. That's the reality of my situation. You guys just haven't heard her before because she takes short, like, five-minute breaks between each screaming session. So I just recorded those intervals. But anyways, enough about my life. I started off by painting a white base coat on the mask. I needed to put a lot of white on it because the material was really soaking up all the paint. This part definitely took the longest. I did try to speed things up with a hairdryer, which I think did help. It helped move things along a bit. Eventually, I got pretty good coverage after doing several layers of white. I had a few little specks of paint that got on the edge, especially because I didn't tape it up, but I was fine with it. I just went in with a black Posca and touched it up and it all disappeared. I wanted to turn my mask into a character, so I drew some eyeballs and a little derpy mouth. I like giving my characters eyelids, it just makes them look deranged and silly. So I added an eyelid to one of his eyes. There's also a little drool coming out of the mouth. That's in honor of my girlfriend who drools a lot in her sleep. This mask looks nothing like her, she just drooled a lot last night, so I added that in. I decided to give him a little puff of hair, because he's not meant to look bald and intimidating. Just plain old crazy. I colored in the drool in one of his eyes with a blue Posca. For whatever reason, I really like the asymmetrical look, so only one of his eyes is gonna be blue. Sometimes I'm very indecisive. I hadn't made up my mind if he's gonna be a blonde or a redhead, so I just did a little bit of both. Best of both worlds. He also has some big chubby cheeks that are kinda cut off at the end. You can't really see much of his face, you only get to see a very little bit of him. But I think that much is enough to let you know he's got some <laughs> issues. No judgment here. I've got 99 issues of my own. So then I decided to massacre the baby. Walking down the dollar store aisle, he really stood out to me. Just felt like he was staring through my soul. The second I looked into those eyes, I felt disturbed. So that's your name. Poopy. Poopy. So in retaliation, I ripped off his arms. They just kinda popped right out. I had a feeling he's been through this before in a past life. Poopy. Poopy. And then I decided he's had a hard time so he could use a pedicure. <laughs> Let's do it. Just some gentle sanding and chopping. He was a very good sport about it. He didn't even flinch. If you're new here and you don't want me to give you a pedicure, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. And because I've gained some experience with giving haircuts, I figured I'd give him one too. I just didn't want him to feel left out. There was quite a bit of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm not sure if that's normal with haircuts. I actually had to turn away at times because I didn't want to breathe in the fumes he was releasing. This goes without saying, but don't try this at home. You should only give haircuts if you're experienced, like me. I didn't really know what to do with him at this point. He does look beautiful as is. But I wanted to give him a complete transformation, so I'll be using him as a base to sculpt on top of. In order to help the epoxy stick better, I first went through and sanded him down. Since he's too disturbingly cute for the dark side, I decided to cover up his whole face. No one wants to see that anymore. Then I started working my way around the whole body using epoxy. I even added epoxy to the inside of his skull. My plan for this doll is to turn it into a planter, like a pot that I could stick a plant into. I wanted it to match my evil aesthetic though, so I decided decided to make it look like a mandrake root. For those of you who are not Potterheads, mandrake roots look kinda like people. They're often associated with dark arts and witchcraft. There's a ton of magic rituals they're used in. Poopy. They're quite the pantry essential, right up there with basil and thyme. So yeah, I'm turning this dollar store baby into a mandrake root planter. I wanted it to be one of those planters that sits on the edge of the table, so I'm using the edge of my makeshift desk to help hold the shape while the epoxy hardens. I wanted the planter to have the creepy, bulging eyes that I love, so I started sculpting those. As I went along, I used water to smooth out the edges and blend the epoxy together. I also gave him a happy little mouth. He's a happy little mandrake. Since he's a root, He's pretty wrinkly all over and has a lot of little root things sticking off of him. And then I was finally ready to paint him. I started off with a very light peachy color. I kind of just painted the whole thing in that at first. And then I painted his bulging eyes and mouth black. At this point, he started to look like an alien to me. But that's fine. I'll take that. To make him look like he's fresh out of the ground, I went back in with a very watered down brown and just painted all over him. I even added a little bit of greenery here and there to make him really look like a root. To make him look more lifelike, I also put in some highlights in the eyes and added some details to him. A lot of you guys mentioned going over eyeballs with a glossy varnish to make them pop a whole lot more and appear more realistic. I really appreciate you guys giving me advice. A lot of your guys' advice has helped me a lot, so thank you. I do think the eyeballs look a lot cooler now. To make it look a little mossy in some spots, I sponged on some paint. After he was completely dry, I found a little plant that was just perfect for his head. I actually don't know how long this plant will survive, so if you see a new haircut on him at some point, you'll know why. And last but not least, I have this glass jar I found at the dollar store. Dollar store makeovers are actually a bit of a challenge since there's not a whole lot of good options on stuff to customize. I found paper plates and party supplies and off-brand soda bottles, but obviously I wasn't gonna paint on those. This jar just looked cool, so I ended up picking it up. It does have an indent. I think a label is supposed to go there, but yeah, that did make it a little more difficult on deciding what to paint on it. It took me a while just to brainstorm, but I ended up drawing some sketches just to get a rough idea. The jar came with a little sticker on the bottom. I won't be needing that anymore, so I ripped it off. It wasn't very satisfying, so I just used some acetone to rub the rest of the residue off. And then it was finally ready to paint, except not quite. Because as I learned from my last painting on jars video, that was a long time ago, you don't need to watch that, those were dark times. But yeah, I learned that paint does not like to stick to glass. I've gained a couple brain cells since then, so I started off by Mod Podging the whole jar. I did three layers of Mod Podge just to make sure I got an even coat and didn't miss any spots. Once that was all dry, I went in with the base color. It's like a light beigey gray kind of color. My idea for this jar is to turn it into like a sloth character. I figured sloths are pretty evil because it's one of the seven deadly sins, thou shall not sloth. After painting the base coat, I felt like there was still some light shining through the jar and kind of breaking up the paint a little bit, so I decided to paint the inside of the jar black and also went ahead and painted the cap black as well. The cap was giving me a hard time. The paint didn't want to stick to it, so I had to cover that in Mod Podge too. I started sketching the little sloth's face onto the jar. I made the face mostly inside the indented label area, trying to work with the shape that I have. Some of the paint was still giving me a little bit of trouble. I just kept messing with it and doing touch-ups as I went. I didn't want to add too many layers of Mod Podge because I didn't want it to get too goopy and textured. I also gave the sloth a little fuzzy belly. 
I had originally planned to give him some arms on the side, but I think they would end up being too high up on the jar. They would just look weird if I added arms right next to his eyeballs, so I just left them off. I actually like how the cap looks. It almost looks like a beanie. I even added my little loon signature to it. To make the jar look more finished, I added some glossy varnish to the glass part. I left the cap though. I liked the contrast between the glossy jar with the matte cap on top. So that was my dollar store makeover. I was able to make quite a few evil characters to add to the army. Thou shall not sloth. Click on the top right or bottom left, you lazy bum.